Hi everyone, you don't know me, and I definitely don't know you, but there's one thing I do know, and that being a creative can be hard sometimes. Especially if you're the type like myself who likes to come up with the original stories and characters, but has a nagging voice in the back of your head that's always like, everything you think of is a ripoff, Every, you're such a hack, this is stupid. And today, I'm going to do just that by showing you a really stupid and self-indulgent story I've had in my brain for probably a little over a year now called Liminal Lost and Found, aka Laugh, because it's so stupid you laugh at it. Anyways, without going on a tangent, Liminal Lost and Found is basically that feeling you get when you're watching Kingdom Hearts clips with no context. And you're seeing these characters with drastically different art styles talking about love and friendship and the heart of darkness and then like Mickey Mouse shows up and he has like a gun and you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, that's laugh. But put all of that, put it in the back rooms, less monsters and more worrying about resources and interpersonal relationships. So with all that out of the way, Let's ourselves no clip into the liminal as I start talking about the main characters of this really stupid story. So when a character from, you know, the vast, infinite possibilities of multiverses gets plopped into the liminal and all its levels of spaces of liminalness, they become what's known as a wanderer. And a group, a subset of these, you know, wanderers formed this little community uh, called Little Town, which is just a town that's little and it's filled with all these wanderers who are just trying to help each other survive and possibly figure out a way to get back to their home dimensions, back where they're supposed to be. And just like any, you know, town or community, People often have things that they do to help out or be a part of this community. And one of those roles is that of a scout, which is someone who goes out into the uncharted, not as well known parts of the liminal to scout things out. You know, if there's resources or if it's even safe to be in there in the first place. All the characters, uh, main characters today are scouts. And the first guy we have here, his name is Volpez. Uh, Volpez being, you know, Latin for fox, because he's a fox guy. But yeah, Volpez is, um, he's my baby girl. He's, he's my baby girl. <laughs> I say that because uh, despite me drawing him in more modern clothes here, that he's actually from a medieval, a medieval world. For one thing, uh, populated by furries, but we're not going to get into that. But secondly, and more importantly, medieval in its setting, in its location. So the technology, the fashion, the, the accepted cultural norms and standards for society is very much based on medieval values and whatnot. So Volpez here, he gets plopped into this place that for one thing, not everyone, you know, is a furry. So that's going to probably freak him out a little bit, but it's also you know, like technology. Um, there, there's no magic in his home dimension. So, you know, there's people out there using like magic and, and stuff. It's just all this stuff for him to have to comprehend and get used to. But unlike, I guess a normal person would com compartmentalize all of this is uh, Volpez, um, the best way I can describe him personality wise is if anyone has ever seen Barbie Princess and the Popper. Um, the villain in there, Primager, you know, this, this slimy, sneaky, conniving, foppish, is that the word? You know, guy. Yeah, that's Volpez, except he thinks he's way cooler than he actually is. So yeah, his, his whole entire character arc is him, well, first of all, getting used to all, like, the stuff that, you know, he's not familiar with or even, like, ever thought of in the liminal. But then him going, okay, how can I use this to my advantage? And him trying to manipulate things to his wanting, whether that be becoming, like, the top dog. Well, he's not a dog, he's a fox. The top fox in charge. Or, you know, getting back to his home dimension. Enacting those he believed who wronged him. Since, FYI, he was a petty criminal 
and he ended up in the liminal after running from a failed uh, criminal activity, probably robbery or something. I don't know. He's a mess. He's, he's a mess. He's a mess. I'm disappointed with him constantly. But his character arc of growing, realizing that uh, revenge and his selfish nature uh, isn't really the best way to uh, go. Just learning to be a better person and also accepting parts of himself that he kind of, what's the, what's the word for it? Kind of pushed down deep inside because he was, you know, living in a very, very conservative setting. Uh, and what I mean by that is that, yes, he does, you know, accept that he is gay and he likes to be flamboyant about it. Um, good for him. Good for him. Another thing that just furthers this whole entire theme of this video with just being as self-indulgent and cringe as I want is that all the characters here are very much based off of characters or ideas or just, you know, things in general that I was very much obsessed with as a preteen slash teen. And in the case of Volpez here, he is just unabashedly just me taking Slagar the Cruel from the Redwall series of books and going, okay, but what if I could fix him? What if I could take him before he became super, super duper evil? And I just put him in a situation where he has to grow and become better as a person because I think that'd be a very interesting character arc. But yeah, uh, with that, we got um, Volpa's done here, so let's go on go on to our next guy, Lefka, which, uh, from my understanding, means lion. I just, I thought it was a cool sounding name, honestly, and like, like Volpez, he's also just me taking a, a character and going my city now. In this case, it's Lino from the 2011 <laughs> rendition of Thundercats, but also mix in you know, Jim Hawkins from Treasure Planet, Link in his various iterations, and kind of a Luke Skywalker a little bit, and just kind of like showing protagonist, you know, JRPG, RPG protagonist in general. Letka, I would describe him as the peanut butter to Volpez's jelly. In Letka's world, his home dimension, he was very much the typical, you know, Prince, not quite king, a uh, chosen hero of of a typical fantasy, magic-filled, a little bit of sci-fi technologies, like like a little sprinkle with him, you know, going through like the hero's journey of, oh, there's the big bad evil guy, me and my group of friends, we're gonna stop him and save the world. But in the case of uh, Lefka, um, there is a heel turn where one of, you know, his friends in his friend group um, stabs him in the back and it's revealed that, whoa, uh, she was working for the big, bad, evil guy all along. Which, you know, it's just me taking a plot point from, once again, Thundercats uh, 2011, but hey, I thought it was cool. Um, anyways, so right when that happens, I imagine like he gets pushed off like a ledge or something into like some abyss and that's how he like then gets just phased into the liminal or like they shoot like a laser at him's like haha we killed him and all his you know friends who didn't betray him are like no Levka why he's not dead he's just in the liminal of course the tragic thing is is that uh, Levka doesn't remember any of that and he gets something that's called liminal sickness which is a sickness that some people get once they get in the liminal, which is they get retrograde amnesia and they forget uh, who they are before reaching, before they got in the liminal, among other side effects like nausea and uh, headaches. And usually it, it does, you know, one's memories do end up coming back. It just takes a bit. You know, Levka, his character arc is part of it is trying to get back those memories of who he was 
and figure out, you know, what's going on and what he, what's his, what's his deal is. Um, and I just really like, there's going to be a lot of parallels and opposites within this little quartet of characters I have today. And one of those dynamics we already, we are already seeing here is, you know, the hero and the villain, the rogue, the hero not quite remembering he was a hero and the rogue trying to hide the fact or the villain trying to hide the fact he's a villain and part of that comes in is when you know Levka and Volpes end up in Little Town uh, because they kind of show up uh, the middle at the same time and end up getting brought to Little Town together and it's revealed Levka has liminal sickness uh, Volpez, you know, not wanting to reveal the fact that he's not a trustworthy, you know, person to all these people. It's like, oh yeah, I, I totally have that too. Um, totally, totally. Yep. No memories of who I am. And of course, since Levka, you know, even though not always being the perfect little goody two shoes, I do think that a lot of times he tries to do heroic things for the wrong reasons, like a bit more selfishly or to prove himself um, to be uh, a masculine hero. Because I do think um, from the world he was from, a lot like how Volpez has to deal with um, the conservative values of his home dimension, Levka has to deal with uh, that toxic max uh, masculinity and whatnot. Um, they kind of play off of each other. They bring out the worst and the best on each other. And I think eventually, though, they do propel each other forward to be be better people. You know, friendship. It's, ma it's magic. So here we are on the next character here, Daisy Dawnlight. Yes, she is a My Little Pony, specifically from Gen 4, Friendship is Magic. Look, from 10 to 15, that, that show was like my my hyperfixation. Okay, I'm I'm allowed to do this. I can I will reiter reiterate this. This idea is cringy, self-indulgent, and schlocky. Shout out to the creator Dreamy Bay on DeviantArt for making this uh, base. All these MLP bases, this one specifically that I'm referencing, to get the proportions a little bit better. But anyways, on to Daisy. Daisy Dawnlight. Yeah, she's a, she's a unicorn, and she's she's kind of purple, ain't she? Her name, it was just kind of me thinking about what would sound good, and also kind of thinking about her role in the story. So, for people who know or do not know MLP FIM, a lot of the characters that have magical importance um, a lot of the unicorns who either parallel or have similarities to Twilight Sparkle have similar sounding names. So Twilight Sparkle, Sun Sunset Shimmer, there's like a bajillion other ones, but those are the only two I can, well, one outside of Twilight that I can think of. You know, Dawnlight is a reference to the fact that a lot like Twilight, Dawnlight here will have, that Dawnlight here has a lot of magical importance that develops throughout the story. Daisy, it just sounded good. Daisy Dawnlight, I don't know. I just liked the way it sounded. Personality-wise, outside of the Twilight Sparkle inspiration with her being the, you know, studious bookworm, you know, goody two-shoes, is Muffin, AKA Ditsy Doo, AKA Derby Hooks. You know, the, the fan favorite background character that I know a lot of us Probably a lot of us still do have a soft spot for. So in the case of Daisy, you know, she's intelligent, she has good intentions, she's strong-willed, but she is a bit of a klutz. So the thing with Daisy that kind of makes her unique as a character compared to everyone else in this video is the fact that she was born in the liminal. Quick backstory here is that one of the founders of Little Town found her right after she was born by her uh, dying mother who, whose last words was only to like, to say her, her daughter's name was Daisy Dawnlight for, you know, passing on. And thus, this founder, you know, took her in, adopted her, you know, raised her as uh, her own. Um, so because of this, Daisy is, I would say, I would say, 
quite comfortable with the strangeness and the oddities of the liminal. This is all just second nature to her. It's what she's grown up with. And because, you know, spending her whole life growing up in Little Town, you know, all of that, community, coming together, that kind of thing, are all is, is stuff that's very important to her. And she really wants to prove her spot, prove her role in Little Town. So part of that actually comes in the fact that once a new scout expedition team is needed, the one who actually wrangles uh, Volpez and Lefka together um, and leading them, it's like, yep, we're, we're going to be a, a new group. We're going to go do the thing and be useful members of Little Town. <laughs> and I don't know, I just think the idea of a literal My Little Pony being the one in charge of like these two like grown men. I mean, Daisy is an adult too, but just the visual of this cute pony being in charge, I, I just think it's hilarious. It's so funny to me, okay? She's epic, she's a, she's a girl boss, but no gaslighting and no gatekeeping, because she's better than that. But someone who is barely above the bar of being better at that is <laughs> the last character we have for today, and that is Azure. Azure. Azure? Look at me, I don't even know how to say my own character's name. And isn't that fantastic? We'll just call her Azure, you know, which is a shade of blue. Azure is from a world that is the most like our own, that in that it's one of those cyberpunk futuristic hellscapes, capitalist hellscapes even more so than the one we're in now currently and her whole entire thing is that she was born to be a weapon she was you know made born in a lab she has like this robotic core where her chest should be that gives her the ability to control water you know hydrokinesis and due to her being subjected to you know the horrors of lab experiments and testing she ended up in the liminal after finally escaping that environment probably beat up a lot of scientists on the way to that freedom only to end up in the liminal which she isn't all uh, too happy about i imagine so she joins the cast a bit later on i think after you know the trio of daisy Lefka and Volpez, you know, do some, you know, missions. They end up going to a level in the liminal that's filled with all like those weird pool sections or whatever you often see in like liminal space pictures. And that's where they meet Azure. And Azure being this very defensive, scared to really trust or interact with anyone, she automatically assumes the three of them want to capture or like fight her. So she fights them first and they're definitely getting their butts handed to them because they're surrounded by water and water is kind of her thing. Eventually, Daisy and Kanalevka get through to her that, you know, hey, we're not a threat. You know, we're all gonna be friends here. And Azure uh, reluctantly accepts uh, the offer to, you know, join them in Little Town for the time being. So yeah, if it wasn't obvious, especially if you're looking at her rough design there in the upper corner, is she is very much just lapis lazuli from steven universe but not just not just that we have some dorothy from big o but also design wise at least very much inspired by this put nip up on screen vocaloid music video i thought the art was really cool for the look of gumi i just thought was really cool and definitely inspired uh, azure's look a bit so yeah she's definitely this kind of um jaded distant callous, sarcastic person who does lighten up a good bit, I think, throughout the story before she relapses uh, in her old ways of, you know, fearing the worst possible thing always happening to her and not winning that. She joins the antagonistic group of the story. Not to go into too much of a tangent, but basically she's like, okay, the bad guys are clearly much, much more powerful than all of you guys, so I'm going to join them. So. I don't have any bad things happen to me. And her realizing that, huh, bad things are always gonna happen to you. That's just a part of being alive. And it's usually a lot better to be with people who will actually care and support you even when those bad things happen than, you know, just going for, you know, whoever you think is better, if that makes any sense. Like I said, this is very self-indulgent and not only self-indulgent, but just me 
connecting very loose ideas of threads of ideas on a cork board with pins, just just pure ramshackled insanity. Also, since I did say she is from a world that is just ours, but like cyberpunk dystopian, and I don't know where else to put this. She's Brazilian. I don't know why, I just felt right. Do what you will with this information. with Asher's character illustration being about done with, I think it's time we move on to the final reveal. So hi again. Uh, I realized too late I forgot to say my name in the intro, but yeah, my name is Gat. Uh, you can also call me Gatsby. Uh, but if you got this far in the video, I just want to say uh, thank you so much. I'm still very new to all this uh, YouTube video making and content creation. So yeah, if you like this video, you know, I really do appreciate it. You know, I want to hopefully make some cooler stuff down the line. So, you know, stay tuned. If you do, if you don't. That's epic. Uh, to let all those see you next time, you know, stay safe and uh, be kind to one another. Bye!